So you finish up your flight on an absolutely beautiful day. Your landing is just a squeaker. You roll up to the FBO and shut down where the line guy marshals you in. You jump out of the plane and the line guy says, what can I do for you? And you say, fill her up. With what? That is a question that's becoming more and more common. This episode is brought to you by Rexair Professional Pilot Academy of Sebring, Florida. They've got everything a flight student needs to be successful. So give them a call, 309-397-6191, or drop them a line, info at rexair.net. The fuel we've been using in general aviation predominantly for the last several decades is 100 low lead, avgas. That's a low lead fuel, but it is a leaded fuel and it will be phased out by 2030, which if you're doing the math in your head right now, you realize that's five years from now. The FAA has an initiative called EAGLE, which stands for Eliminate Aviation Gasoline Lead Emissions. That's kind of it. They have to have a, an acronym. They've been working on that for several years and they're not kidding. Progress is being made. It's slow, but it is happening. As pilots and aircraft owners, it's in our own best interest to keep up on this issue and have some idea what type of fuel we're going to be using in the future, where we can get it, and how this change is going to impact us in a real way. Now, we're all familiar with 100 low lead. It's dyed blue, so we can easily identify it. And the 100 indicates that it's 100 octane fuel. That's important. Octane ratings have a lot to do with which engines they can be used in because that's, that's a measurement of how they resist combustion. Fortunately, on your airplane, at the fuel cap, the filler neck, there is a placard that tells you what type of fuel you should be using in that airplane. If that placard's not there, your airplane's not airworthy. You can get one reprinted and put it on, but do that. LL means it's a low lead fuel containing tetraethyl lead. Go ahead, spell that out if you can. That lead increases the octane, which helps prevent the engine from knocking, especially at high power settings. And while 100 low lead contains less lead than the formerly available 100 octane, it still has lead in it. And there's a worldwide effort to get rid of lead out of any fuels. When I was a kid and learned to drive, we had leaded fuel. And the pump was much larger than the unleaded fuel pump we have now because at one time both were available and you didn't want to put the wrong one in the wrong place. Now, for those who are conspiracy theorists or just cranky old guys and they're like, I don't see why the FAA is messing with this. There's no problem. This has worked fine for years. And it has. The problem is there's only one company in the entire world that produces tetraethyl lead for fuels and they don't want to do it anymore. That suggests 100 low lead is going to go away in the future whether the government does anything or not. The quest is to find a viable replacement. There is no method of keeping 100 low lead because at some point the producer of tetraethyl lead is going to say that's it we're shutting it down. Now, if your aircraft uses a Continental engine, a Lycoming, a Franklin, any of those legacy engines, there's a pretty good bet you're already set up for 100 low lead fuel. That's probably what you've been using all along. It's widely available. It's got a stable supply. We know how it's going to act. And frankly, we're used to dealing with 100 low lead. So that's kind of a no brainer. But things are changing. MoGas is another option for aircraft, and it's essentially the same fuel you buy for your car at the local gas station. It's a standard gasoline product that's perfectly acceptable for most motorcycles, cars, or really cool four-wheelers going out in the woods. MoGas is generally a reasonable choice for most low compression, low horsepower engines. And yes, low compression and low horsepower are relative terms. We're basically talking about below 200 horsepower. If you are running a Rotax 912, and as regular viewers know, I used to own an AirCam that had Rotax 912 engines. If you run an aircraft powered by a Rotax, especially the Rotax 912 series, you're in good shape. Those engines are designed to run on MoGas, unleaded fuels. 
Of course, you'll need 91 octane or better. You cannot go to the cheap pump, 87 octane, and it's less expensive. You must buy premium because you're a premium kind of aircraft owner. On the upside, MoGas is generally significantly less expensive than 100 low lead, whether you're buying it at the airport or at the local Wawa or Texaco or racetrack or whatever. And because you're running a Rotax 912 series, you're probably burning considerably less of that inexpensive fuel than you would be if you were using a Legacy engine, a Continental, a Lycoming, or a Franklin. There is a really big advantage to using MoGas in a Rotax 912 series engines, and that comes down to maintenance. If you're using unleaded fuel, MoGas, in your Rotax 912 series engine, your oil changes will come at 100 hour increments now, instead of 25 hours if you were using 100 low lead. Not only is the unleaded fuel less expensive and generally fairly easy to come by, it also affects your maintenance bill. Doing oil changes at 100 hours rather than at 25 hours saves time, effort, and money. It's also worth noting that the Rotax 912 series can handle MoGas with ethanol up to 10%. That's a big deal because that's generally what's available down at the local gas station. Often the MoGas at the airport will have no ethanol in it, and there's a reason for that. The ethanol limit isn't about the engine itself. The engine will run with 10% ethanol, no problem. The problem is the components of the fuel system, the seals, the hoses, the pumps, the tanks themselves. Those all may be degraded by the ethanol, which could result in leaks or a fuel system failure. Nobody needs that kind of excitement in the air. Take the ethanol limitation of 10% seriously. Now the Rotax is designed to run on unleaded fuel, so you can use that with no additional paperwork or expense. However, if you're running a Lycoming, a Continental, a Franklin, some other legacy engine, you're gonna have to buy an STC, a supplemental type certificate, because that is not the fuel that aircraft or its engine or its systems were designed to work with. The STC, the Supplemental Type Certificate, generally isn't very expensive, but it is important that you get the STC and you take it seriously because that ethanol restriction on Rotaxes is even more important on the Lycomings, Continentals, and Franklins. They have a limitation of zero ethanol where the Rotax can handle up to 10%. Those legacy engines, they want none at all because those seals and hoses and tanks and pumps were not designed with the idea of an ethanol fuel flowing through them. So take that seriously. You really don't want to have a system failure, a fuel failure in flight or on the ground because you use the wrong fuel without paying attention to the limitations that that system and that fuel require. Now there is another unleaded option known as UL94, which is obviously unleaded 94 octane fuel. UL94 is dyed purple. Now UL94 is not as widely available as MoGas, which is in every city in America, or maybe even as 100 low lead, which is at virtually every airport in America, but it is an option and its availability is growing, it does tend to be a bit more expensive, sometimes as much as twice as expensive, but it is an option for those low compression, low horsepower engines that are looking for an unleaded fuel substitute. Like MoGas, however, UL94 may cause damage to tanks, fittings, seals, fuel lines, pumps. So make sure you get that STC, make sure you're aware of how that fuel is going to interact with your engine and systems. It does matter. Now, if you're actively looking for an unleaded fuel option in your area and you're saying, well, there's not, they don't sell that at my airport, you're in luck. Go to this website, flyunleaded.com. You'll find a map of America with some little pin drops at airports across the country that are selling either MoGas or UL94. Let's face it, in some parts of the country, there are very few unleaded fuel options on the airport, but the number are growing. So check out flyunleaded.com and you might be surprised to find out you have an unleaded option right near you. Change is coming. Yes, it is. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because we've been talking about low compression, low horsepower engines. Under 200 horsepower is a good thumbnail on that. But there are aircraft with higher horsepower, higher compression engines that 
Unleaded just will not work. It doesn't have the octane rating needed for those engines to run without knocking and potentially suffering detonation and damaging themselves. Now, AOPA, in conjunction with GAMI and Savvy Aviation, has been doing some experimentation over the last year using a Beechcraft Baron. What they did is interesting, and it's proven to have some interesting results. What they did was they operated a Beech Baron where one engine was operated on traditional 100 low lead, blue dyed fuel, and that's what we run on, so there were no unexpected changes. The other engine was run on a brand new fuel called G100UL, GAMI's 100 octane unleaded fuel. With lots of flight hours under its belt, that Baron performed just fine. As a matter of fact, the engine using the G100UL fuel showed no unexpected deterioration, had no fuel system problems, no leaks, nothing failed. That's good news for us. There's another option coming down the road that may percolate down through all our local airports and provide hope for those folks flying higher horsepower, higher compression, general aviation engines who can't use mo gas. And maybe 94UL just won't work for them, but maybe G100 unleaded is just the ticket for them. To synopsize this whole thing, the 100 low lead fuel we're so used to, we've been so comfortable with, and is in storage at almost every general aviation airport across America, is going away. And it's going away sooner rather than later. Fortunately, there's some really smart, dedicated folks who are working on a solution to this, and we do have some options today. But keep an eye peeled, because the fuel you use, and the fuel I use, and our general aviation aircraft, is likely to change in the relatively near future. And it's always best to be prepared and know what's coming down the pike. If you really want to keep up on the latest, you can go to an FAA website at faa.gov slash unleaded. You can keep up with what's happening with the Eagle Initiative there and what's coming along with all these new fuels. Or you could just watch Mad Props Arrow. That's generally my choice. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope this discussion of fuel options has been helpful to you. And I'll see you back here next week on your personal device for a little more Mad Props Arrow.